Let's solve x by completing the square. Now, solving the x-intercept means the set y equals 0. So let's try this question first. 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 3. Now, we're going to complete the square on this drumbeat x squared x combo. So 0 is equal to, you could throw the 3 over if you really wanted to, but we'll just keep going. We're going to leave a bit more room here to land your airplane. The minus 3, by the way, you could just copy it over. This is all squared. And remember from the previous video that the plus 6 becomes a plus 3. This is your tummy. It's full. You subtract 3 squared, which is 9. So now this is getting easier. This happens to be minus 9, minus 3 is minus 12. So minus 12, we throw it over, becomes 12. 12 is equal to x plus 3 squared. Now the rest of the algebra is pretty easy. As a fair Canadian judge, we're going to square root both sides. And when you square root something squared, the square disappears. So remember that whenever you have something squared, variable squared, square rooted, it becomes plus minus root 12. So just as a little aside here, if you say a squared equals 9, a is equal to plus minus the square root of 9, which is equal to plus minus 3. Just be careful. If you ask what is the square root of 9, we just say the answer is 3, but when you have a variable, make sure it's plus minus. So there we have it. Root 12 is the same thing as 2 times 6, or 2 times 2 times 3. One of these can escape jail, so this becomes plus minus 2 root 3. If you throw the 3 over here, it becomes a minus 3, and we have the value of x. This is the exact two possible values of x. All right, let's uh, set y equals 0 to solve by completing the square here. We're going to aggressively throw the negative 1 over. So we have 1 is equals to this part here. And we can aggressively factor out the 3. So we have 3x squared minus 2x. So notice how 3 times x squared is 3x squared. And 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x. And we simply threw the negative 1 over. So we're, we're working pretty quickly here. Let's set up some nice strong brackets here. We haven't begun completing the square yet, but now we will. Underline the part that we promise is going to be equivalent. And by the way, if you really want to divide both sides by 3, you can do so now. So this is 1 divided by 3 is equals to. And we're going to rewrite this underlying part a little bit longer. Let's write it longer. So we promise this underlying parts are the same. And completing the square, we know how to square something. We're going to copy down the x. We're going to copy down half of the coefficient, which is minus 1. And it's always going to be subtract. Subtract what? We're going to subtract this number squared, which is 1 times 1 is just 1. So we're almost done. We just have to throw the negative term over. So this becomes a 1 over 3. Minus 1 becomes a plus 1. Plus 1 becomes 3 over 3. We want to have a common denominator. Is equals to x minus 1 squared. And by the way, just to save a bit of writing, I'm going to rewrite this as 4 over 3. Because 1 plus 3 is 4, we're just adding fractions. So when we square root both sides, x minus 1 is equal to plus minus the square root of 4 thirds. This is looking pretty good. And by the way, you're allowed to take the square root of the top and the bottom. So this is also equivalent to plus minus root so the square root of 4 becomes 2, and the square root of 3 becomes root 3. And the minus 1 when you throw it over becomes a plus 1. So this is the value of x. This is an acceptable answer. And for those of you who like to match the back of your textbook, you might notice that the uh, fractions are rationalized. You could say 2 root 3 over 3 plus 1 if you really want to rewrite it as 3 over 3. This is equivalent to 
2 root 3 plus 3 over 3. And now it's your turn. Solve by completing the square. You know what to make y equals 2.